It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. Back with Hometown Commander. Back for another episode of Millsy Brews. Show where I brew my version 1.0 decklist of the commander in front of us on my quest to brew the magic world. As always, that deck is going to be down in the description for you below, as I'd really appreciate it if you could interact with the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Consider checking out the links in the description. I'd really appreciate it. Today, we're kicking off week two of Foundations content with another Foundations Jumpstart Commander. And what I want to talk about here with General Creep, the Bolt Bringer, is why I think I enjoy Jumpstart so much. I wanted to do... Uh, the 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 stat tracking so that I could confirm it, but in each of our mainline Jumpstart releases, so Jumpstart, Jumpstart 2022, and now this, which is being coded as Jumpstart 2025, um, but uh, the set name is Foundations Jumpstart. Each of them have provided us a true Goblin Commander. Uh, regular Jumpstart brought us Muxus. Jumpstart 2022 brought us Ardaz, and now we're here in Jumpstart 2025 with General Crete, the Bolt Bringer. A three mana goblin soldier that says whenever one or more goblins you control attack, we're going to make a 1 1 goblin tapped and attacking. And then whenever another creature you control enters, it's going to deal one damage to each opponent. So here is Impact Tremors on a goblin. And it is important in two ways. One, I, I don't think the Crete's the best goblin commander by any means. What I want to do here is show off that I think it's still relevant, and there's a lot of great goblin commanders that you can choose. But having Impact Tremors on it is actually important because it's very easy to make a lot of goblins, and that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to talk about goblins. Who doesn't love them? We're going to talk about ways to copy goblins for one turn. There's a lot of ways to do that, including some other goblins. So we're going to do that. We'll talk about a way to buff the team, make sure all these one ones are actually dealing damage and not just dealing damage when they come into the battlefield. And then more ways to deal out damage, whether it be other things when creatures enter or just other ways in general to deal damage. I think the goal here is we're doing that classic goblin thing. But we're going to add a teeny bit more of making sure creatures enter since Crete pays them off literally. And I think that's I think that's important at the end of the day. Um, I have had the privilege of seeing decks like Muxus uh, exist. And, and I think Muxus is a little bit better of a commander for goblins. But um, And of course, you have things like Krenko. But I think it's fun that we have all these goblin commanders that are viable. And you do have options instead of it just being one. So here, we'll talk about Ardaz, our Jumpstart 2022 commander. Has haste, remember, it or another creature enters a battlefield under control. That creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So a great way to pay off goblins coming in. And for four mana, you get a goblin. I like Ardaz a ton because it's cheap. It comes in, it get, it buffs itself, and it's going to buff every other goblin that comes in as well. Bloodmark Mentor gives all of our red creatures first strike, giving us that teeny bit of advantage in combat, right, as we get there. Dropkick Bomber can... Buff all gobl other goblins we control. And then for red mana, we can make a goblin get flying, but then it it sacrifices itself at the end of the turn. That's nice because you do have the option to potentially get in evasively if need be to get some damage in on an opponent. Um, we've got Goblin Chieftain giving all other creatures, uh, goblins we control, plus one, plus one in haste. Goblin King giving all of our other goblins mountain walk. Goblin Matron comes in and gets a Goblin of our choice and puts it into our hand. A great ability, especially if you need something like one of these guys. Or you're looking for one of our many Krenkos that we'll get to in a couple uh, slides. Goblin Rob Master makes a 1-1 Goblin at the start of each combat with haste. Um, all of our Goblins that are able to attack have to do so. And then it, when Goblin Rabble Master attacks, it gets plus one, plus one, plus one for each other attacking Goblin. Trashmaster buffs all of our other goblins and allows us to sack a goblin to destroy an artifact. Warchief gives all of our goblins haste, and goblins cost a little bit less to put down. Hobgoblin Abandoned Lord gives all of our goblins plus one, plus one, and we can tap and Hobgoblin deals damage equal to the number of goblins you control to enter the battlefield this turn to any target. So we have a big turn, we put in lots of goblins. Abandoned Lord can deal out some damage. And then we get into our trio of Krenkos that we're playing in the deck. Krenko Baron of Tin Street says whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you can pay a red. If you do make a 1-1 one, one Goblin, gains haste until the turn. We could sack an artifact and put a, a counter on each Goblin you control. We're not playing a ton of treasure support in the deck. But remember, it doesn't say your graveyard. I mean, if your opponents are playing foods, treasures, things like that, we can we can leave up the red man and have Krenko start making us Goblins when that happens. Krenko, Krenko Mob Boss is probably the most popular Krenko. Tapping to make a goblin for each goblin we control. A great way with a Crete to just make a ton of damage to our opponents with that out. So Krenko is happy to be had here. 
Same thing with Krenko Tin Street Kingpin. Whenever it attacks, you put a counter on it and make goblins equal to its power. Again, a great way to get a bunch in at once, a bunch of damage to our opponents. Legion War Boss, very similar to the Rabble Master, making a 1-1 goblin with haste each turn, except that that, got, that token has to attack. And then when Legion War Boss uh, attacks, it gets to mentor a smaller creature. And then, well, the... Um, who I consider to be the king of uh, goblin commanders other than Krenko Mob Boss, Muxus Goblin Grandee. When it enters the battlefield, you reveal the top six of your library, put all goblins with CMs, mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield. And when Muxus attack, it gets plus and plus from for each other goblin you control. Muxus is a great way of cheating other goblins in and, and getting a big buff, making it a threat when it gets into combat. I think it works great here because it brings other goblins with it and allows us to um, get in and get hurting uh, our opponents. Siege Gang Commander and Siege Gang Lieutenant both make goblins when they come in. Uh, Siege Gang Lieutenant gives them haste. Uh, Commander doesn't, but both of them have the ability to sack a goblin to deal damage to a target. Uh, Commander deals two and the Lieutenant deals one. So there's a way to potentially sack some goblins to deal damage. Squee, whenever it attacks, you make a goblin that's attacking as well. And we can pay four mana and exile four cards from our graveyard to bring Squee back from the graveyard uh, if we need him, which is great because he does have haste. And then we have the classic spells that make goblins. Dragon Fodder, Hoiling Opera, Krenko's Command, making goblins for really cheap rates, getting those creep triggers, and just widening our board state as it goes. And I think that's the thing that benefits us the most is widening our board and getting in and dealing damage. But as far as short-term copy goes, I think this is one of the ways that we can take real advantage of getting either multiple copies of an effect or getting more goblins in. So something like Kiki Jiki can tap to make a copy of a target non-legendary creature you control, except it has haste. Sack a beginning next end step. This is a great way to either copy a goblin that makes other goblins when it comes in, or just copy a goblin to get another buff to all of our goblins until end of turn, right? You know, there's lots of ways to do that. Electro duplicate makes copy of a creature until end step. And we can flash it back to do it again. Kindred Charge feels great in a deck like this. Choosing a type and just making a copy of each of the creatures of that type until end of turn and they get haste. This is a great way to take a board of goblin tokens and make a ton more of them and give them haste, get into combat and get some big damage in. Molten Duplication again, single target copy, except it's an artifact and it gets haste second at the end of the turn. Um, Twin Flame. Let's you pick a, a one to copy for free, and then you can pay two and a red uh, to do it over and over for more if you want to, making copies. And then something like Cursed Mirror comes in and makes a copy of a creature the turn it comes in until end of turn, and then after that, it's just a mana rock. So here's a way to come in and copy the Chieftains or the um, Trash Masters or, or Rebel Masters or Legion War Bosses or make other copies of them to be able to get more things you know, as you see fit in order to keep your game plan going and getting damage in but i think there's an argument that we don't want to just leave our 1-1 goblins that way we have things like great train heist that can give them first strike until in a turn or you can use it to get an extra combat uh, you see a pair of goblins can give all of our creatures plus two plus oh until in a turn or we can use it to make a couple goblins if need be heraldic banner can come down and just give all of our goblins plus one plus oh patchwork banner right from bloomborough gives them all plus one plus one unless it tap for a red uh, quest for the goblin lord says when it enters when a goblin enters, you put a counter on it. And then when it has five or more counters on it, all of our goblins get plus two, plus oh. And even Castle Embreth can tap to give all of our creatures plus one, plus oh. So the wider the board state, right, the better that these buffs become. On the flip side, though, we have ways to deal more damage. A cavalcade of Calamity may look odd up against the slide where I just showed you multiple ways to get a creature above power one. But I think it's important to have multiples of these subsets so that if we see a game where we see Cavalcade first, maybe we don't put down one of these buffs. Says whenever a creature you control power one or less attacks, it deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that it's attacking, right? So if we have a board full of one ones and we have a Cavalcade down, but we draw a patchwork, we may not play it and just make sure that we keep Cavalcade online dealing damage when creatures attack. Enduring Courage kind of gives that Ardaz ability to give a buff and give creatures haste until end of turn when they come in. City on Fire can be convoked out with all of our goblins and can triple the amount of damage that a source we control would deal. This will triple both Crate's ability and combat. City of Fire is great, and it's a great top end uh, for a deck like this. There's Impact Tremors again in the deck. We also have Perforos in the deck as well. I just didn't put it on this uh, slide. Uh, for more damage when creatures come in, 
mechanized warfare will add one to the damage dealt by in red or effect source. So that's pretty great. And then something like rape environment, very similar to um, cavalcade. Whenever a creature power two or less attacks, it, it deals damage to the player planeswalker that it's attacking. So just ways to get that damage in, even after those creatures have come in and create stuff the damage. We still want to get that damage through because a board of one ones may get easily chump blocked. But if our opponents are still taking damage, you know, there's still ways to get value out of those one ones, even if they get traded into or chump blocked and died. At least they're still getting their damage through and they're still meaningful for what we're trying to do. Uh, but but I've said it before, on the, and I'll say it again, no decks ever complete. This is my version 1.0 shot at um, at uh, Crete. In really most Goblin decks in general, I did Krenko for Murders of Karlov Manor, but I've actually never done either of the other Krenkos. In fact, honestly, brewing this deck made me want to go take a look at Krenko, Mob Boss, or Muxus. So if you're interested in hearing that, please uh, let me know down in the comments. But um, in testing, I think we're just going to try to see what do we need more of. Do we need more of just straight goblins with things like Goblin War Party or Goblin Assault making more goblin tokens? Uh, Goblin War Party gives us the other option to give our creatures plus and plus until end of turn. We do have things like Coat of Arms or the Banner of Kinship from uh, the new Foundation set that can just give all of our creatures a big buff depending on how many of them we have. Those feel like good options, right, as well. I just don't know um, if we always uh, want them. I think we want them for sure. The question is just um, what slots do we use for them? How, how do we incorporate them into the deck? I think that's what I want to know in testing is how often they're important because we do have things like shared animosity to give us buffs in combat and frosty or the wilds to give our goblins trample. Is something like this just strictly better? You know, I think it answers yes, but the question is what do you take out to do it? How do we find those ratios? I think that's a, it's, it's a fair thing to say because I think it's important when you go into testing a deck. But we'll get into play test number one. Keep it a four lander with the war chief for the haste, the quest of the goblin lord, and then leisure war boss. So a great way to um, get goblins in and get them going. Chieftain for more plus one plus one in haste. So not bad, right? We got the process started. There we go. We see Muxus. Turn two, we'll put in that quest of the goblin lord. So we got nothing else to do this turn. Turn three, we've got a couple options. We can get Leech and Warboss set up. Uh, Crete uh, only makes the tokens when goblins attack. It doesn't actually care about it attacking. So I kind of like the idea of getting the Warboss down, making that 1-1 uh, one, one goblin. So just so we can get this quest to go, remember we need five in order to get the plus two plus so that goblin has to attack. It may get blocked on turn three, it may not. It will just depend on what our opponents have on their boards. Here on turn four, I mean, I love the idea of getting Crete down, getting some more damage that's going to lead to another damage right from uh, Legion War Boss. But I do have the option, actually, by going Instigator into Legion, making the token to, to turn on Quest for the Goblin Lord, if that's what I want to do, right? Um, I was going to say, four mana could also get me Goblin War Chief and Instigator, right? War Chief comes down and makes them cost one less. We'll use that fourth mana for the Instigator. The Instigator gets me a Goblin token. So now we're up to five here. Turn this online. Move, move to combat right. Legion War Boss makes another one. You know, now we're all plus two, plus zero. Oh. Everything has haste. Now we can attack if we want to. The you know I'd probably put the Mentor on this one if I'm going to attack that way, just so we can have a two toughest creature. But you can see the party's starting to roll there, right? The next turn, I think we'd put Crete down for two mana. We could get uh, Chieftain in for two mana. So uh, that's a, a damage to everybody there. And then move to combat. Um, Legion Warboss making another goblin, you know, damage to everybody on that. Chieftain, again, remember giving every other goblin haste. So, so Crete could attack this turn. Of course, when we attack, we're going to get another 1 1 damage everywhere. And again, they're coming in as three ones because of the Goblin Lord. And I mean, this board state's going to start to get out of hand because, I mean, we're getting a plus one, plus one buff here. And we, you know, so we're basically, every goblin's getting plus three, plus one other than Chieftain. So we're getting a little bit of the toughness on these goblins so they're not as chump blockable. Remember that when War Boss attacks, it's going to start handing out plus one, plus one counters with this mentor, <laughs> right, uh, to, to buff up other goblins. And I think next turn, we just drop Muxus and see what we get off the top off the top six and the game's probably you know in pretty good shape we play muxus for five we look at the top six 
the number it's put. Any number, goblins with converted mana cost five or less. So that's uh, Krenko and Treasure Naver. These are going to go on the bottom. Remember, they all have haste because of uh, War Chief and uh, Chieftain. Remember, they're all getting plus uh, plus three, plus one, right? So there's there's two more damage for Crete. Move to combat. Another goblin, another damage. Remember that Krenko makes goblin sequel to its power, and it's getting right plus three, plus one right now. So it's four. It gets a it gets a counter. So it's five, making five more goblins. And you can see where this board state's just going to get out of hand. Uh, Again, all these are coming in. All these ones we already have out are having haste. They're attacking. Muxus gets to attack. I mean, now the board's just going wide and our opponents have to deal with it. If they wipe the board, um, you know, that that would stink, right? And that's that's our main downside is we don't play, we don't really have much protection in red for our board, which is why we need to get out fast. We need to get going, right? So that we can get that that control on hand before right our opponents have the option to run the board right and, and get that in but getting into playtest number two a four lander with a skull clamp this is a great way to start clamping these goblins right that legion war boss and, other, and and things like crete can make the trash master giving all goblins plus one plus one and right, like i said destroying the artifacts if we want to but i think we'll get the the skull clamp down mainly because then we can start clamping the goblins that legion war boss makes if they don't die in order to get uh, more cards nothing i can do in turn two so we'll go into turn three and i think we just want a war boss right get that goblin down and get this this process started we can't clamp at this turn we don't have the mana but i think that's okay i think the point there is just get that process started so that we can do it later uh, i think i would go creep here uh war boss makes a goblin uh, damage everybody uh, we'll attack with war boss and a couple of the tokens um mentor one of them make a goblin because of crete damage main two i will just clamp one of those goblins that came in that turn to draw two refill our hand right keep it going and i think this is where this process is really going to be great for us is refilling our hands now we didn't hit a land there which stinks but now we have enough mana for perforos all right, so now creatures coming in are dealing three damage between Crete and Perforos. Again, one for Legion War Boss, one for attacking, so that's six damage there. We're working our way right towards, towards getting more and more damage in, keeping our process going. Of course, we don't draw another land, but that's okay. We need, what, two devotion to make Perforos into a creature? But I think in all reality, we just want to get as many goblins in as we can, right? So... For four men, I think the easiest way to do that is Krenko's Command plus Seer Splicer Goblin. So that's six, three damage there. Krenko's Command to take two more goblins. That's six more damage. So that's nine total this turn. Move to combat 12 with Legion War Boss, 15 with Crete making a goblin. And then at the end of the turn, Spear Splicer makes another one. So that's 18 this turn on just ETB triggers, whether they died, whether they did anything else. And uh, we couldn't clamp that turn, but that's. A okay. I mean, at the end of the day, I know these play tests are kind of fast, but the truth of the Goblin decks most of the time is you're going to get there quickly or in the mid game or you're not. And so you're just basically trying to push yourself into that mid game and get there. And I think Crete's interesting. It's an interesting spin on it. It's not that expensive of a deck in the grand scheme of things compared to some of the other ones. I mean, you could take some cost out of this deck by taking uh, things like Perforos out, taking things like Legion Loyalist out. You could drop the cost of this deck down pretty low and just um, have, you know, pieces to buff and pieces to make tokens and call it a deck, right? You know, that that's what I think is really interesting about Crete uh, and why I, I hope it's an option for people when it comes to goblins. But if you want to see me brew Muxus or uh, Crunk and Bob Boss, let me know in the comments below. I'd, I'd be happy to try it in the future. But other than that, I'd love to know what you think of General Crete. And I'll catch you guys later.